How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and today we are reviewing the Printin Z Zebra Plates or Zebra Plates for your 3D printer. These are super durable printing surfaces that you can put onto your print bed and yeah, we're going to give them a test, see how they work and compare them against the build tack or should I say fake build tack that came with my Cocoon Create 3D printer. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys, so as I said, these are super durable build plates for your 3D printer. Basically, the zebra plate is a super thick, it's about 4.2 or 4.5 millimeters thick uh, print surface, which is designed to be used many, many times and deliver super reliable prints, but at the same time being flexible so you can pop prints off after, after they're done. So that's the biggest sort of contradiction with FDM 3D printing, especially when printing with high warp materials like ABS. You want it to stick down during the print, but after the print's done, you want to be able to get it off. So I haven't really experimented much with glass printing surfaces, but that's the biggest issue with glass. You might get an awesome stick down to it, but getting it off, you can't flex the glass plate. And that's where the zebra plate comes in. So in terms of construction, the zebra plate has like a composite middle section and these two proprietary thermoplastic uh, coatings. They're both the same, just different colors. So they both work the same. You can flip it around either way. And it also has two thin copper layers, which help for inductive probe sensing if your printer has that. I also like to think, although it's not really talked about, I seem to think the copper might uh, help in terms of heat distribution, but that's just sort of my thoughts. So in terms of testing it out, I chose my Cocoon Create 3D printer, which is the Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2, just rebranded, and it came with this stuff. So we're all familiar with BuildTac. BuildTac is an amazing print surface, and this is the Chinese clone version of it that all these machines are shipping with now. So I can't really say this is BuildTac because it's not, but I am talking about my experiences with this BuildTac-like material. So in terms of the machine, it came with this sheet on the bed and it worked pretty well. So for the torture test, I used my Warpinator 5000, which is the most diabolical torture test for 3D printing and testing warping that I've ever come up with. And basically I tested with PLA and ABS. I chose Aurora brand PLA and eSun brand ABS. So in terms of doing the PLA print, as you would expect, it went down fine onto the build tack light surface. I printed with 60 degrees of bed temperature and it had no issues sticking down. There's a tiny bit of warping, but you'd really, you, you'd be hard pressed to notice it. You have to really, really look closely. But this is the thing, getting it off the print bed is quite difficult because with these platform surfaces, they're adhesive, they stick down to the surface and you can't remove the bed on the Wanhao. So you have to really scrape at it, which means your bed goes out of level and all sorts of issues. So this is the first comparison point between this sort of surface and the zebra plate. Basically, this is removable. You, you put it on the platform with dog, with dog clips or bull, bulldog clips and it removes afterwards and you can flex it separately from the printer, which means you don't have to worry about wrecking your bed level. One big plus. But in terms of printing the PLA, I had no issues on either surface. Unfortunately, printing in the ABS was a different story. So I first tried with 90 degrees bed temperature on the Cocoon Creates BuildTac, again, BuildTac-like surface, and that was the result. It warped pretty much instantly and I killed the print. So I tried 100 degrees bed temp and it did pretty well. To be fair, this is not a bad print, but it's still warping along the edges. And I think my, uh, my Warpinator 5000 might be kind of impossible in a stock Wanhao, but either way, I thought, okay, that's fair enough. We've given the, the stock bed surface a fair go. Let's try the zebra plate and see how it fares. And that was the next thing, removing this surface. So as I said, this is an adhesive back surface. Build tech is much the same. Getting this off your print bed was, or at least in my experience for this surface, was nightmarish. So I peeled it off and the surface decided to pull away from the adhesive 
rather than the adhesive pull away from the aluminium, which meant I had a bed covered in sticky, disgusting adhesive that I couldn't get off without, you know, gumming up the scraper. It was nightmarish. I tried cold, I tried hot, I heated the bed up to 60 degrees and it just gummed up to the, the scraper more. That's a big negative if you want to change these plates. And this is really thin, you know, this is 0.6 mil or 0.8 mil thick. It's quite easy to damage with this scraper when you're getting prints off. So in terms of changing this bed, you don't want to be doing it very often because God, it was painful. What I found actually out of everything was WD-40 decided to work quite well dissolving the adhesive. But as you probably would know, WD-40 is oily, it's greasy, it's, it's, it's a lubricant. So you don't want that on your print surface. But I was having to spray this down to remove the adhesive, which, you know, worked really well, but was not ideal. You know, it's worth mentioning though that the smell of WD-40 is freaking amazing and I will use any excuse to use it in a project just because I've grown up with it. But moving aside, that worked well to get the adhesive off, but it was a mission. I spent about half an hour trying to do it. Anyway, moving on, that was done and I could try out my print in Z zebra plate. Then I came across my next issue. This thing is thick. It's so thick, in fact, that even tightening the springs down on my Cocoon Create completely wasn't enough to make it clear the nozzle. So that's something worth keeping in mind because this platform is so thick, this plate is so thick, you will need to probably modify the springs or remove or change things or washers and stuff to make it fit under the nozzle when you fit it. So what I did is it's, it's a bit of a hack, but I removed two of the washers on each side. It's not ideal, but it's the best I could do with the time I had and it worked okay. So with that done, I could fit the zebra plate into my Wanhao i3 Kikun and Create and yeah, start testing prints. So because I had ABS loaded already, I decided to go straight to the acid test and see how it would fare. And the first print was, well, yeah, I mean, you can probably be the judge of that. It, uh, I came back to it off the platform. And again, I think this torture test is a little bit too cruel for the i3. I don't think any surface would actually work for it unless you modified it with an enclosure. It's not too cold, but it is slowly coming towards autumn in Australia. So, you know, it's probably about 20 degrees in the room. And I think the key is the fact that it's so thin, there's very little surface area for it to stick down. Although it's also worth mentioning, this was at 90 degrees bed temperature. So I ramped it up to 100 degrees and I got that, which is actually pretty good. It's about the same as the build tack surface, small amount of warping, but it did stick. And the fact there's crazing with the plastic where it goes white underneath the surface shows how much adhesion there was to the print bed. It was stuck down. And for those forces to still overcome the edges, yeah, I, I, I still surprise myself how diabolical this, this test is. But that aside, how does the Print and Z zebra plate stack up against other print surfaces? Well, I always disliked the fact that after I printed on my Cocoon Create Wanhao i3, I had to hit the bed with the scraper. And with big prints, you really have to go hard. This is removable. This is removable, easy to flex off the prints, and it's not gonna smash or be fragile like glass. One big important factor to keep in mind, apart from the fact that it's thick, is the fact that it has a lot of thermal mass. So in terms of heating the whole bed, it did take a while for my heated bed on the Cocoon Create to reach 100 degrees. And I don't think it was 100 degrees on the top surface, but it was trying and it did get there eventually to do that print but it did take a long time because there's a lot more thermal mass in this thick sheet than there would be with a sheet of build tack. So there you have it, that is the zebra plate. So what's the bottom line on this print surface in my opinion? Well, this plate retails for about 35 US. So that's an expensive print surface, but keep in mind this thing is super, super durable. You would be extremely hard pressed to damage this. I mean, you can see with this surface, I have had the ABS jam into the surface and it just scraped off. Sure, it stained it, but who cares? It's a print surface. This would outlast 10 build tack sheets. I have no doubt about that. So in terms of your investment, I think it's a very worthy investment in terms of getting a removable plate 
off a machine that otherwise would not have that feature and I would highly recommend checking it out. So if you're interested in grabbing a sheet of Zebra Plate, Printed Z has been kind enough to give me a discount code to give to you guys. All you need to do is enter Muse10 to get 10% off any Zebra Plate or Zebra Skin. I will be reviewing the Zebra Skin in a future video. If you want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It does help me out quite a lot and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Catch you later guys. Bye. Thank you.